Joining me now from our London studios is Karin Dusat Sat, who is EVP of Product Marketing, Design and Open Innovation at Orange Group. Karin, good to see you on Telecom TV. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are at the moment in our industry where we're starting to see the introduction of 5G mm -hmm. um, alongside its inevitable marketing. How much of a risk is it for an operator to go focus too heavily on the technology rather than promoting the actual resulting services? I think that's, so thank you for your question. I think, um, so Orange has uh, never been really focused on technology. I mean, along the years, and it's been, you know, the launch of 3G and then 4G, we've really tried as much as we could to focus on the services. I think 5G will bring a new era for the telecom industry. It's a journey, so it's not going to be, you know, a snap and it's going to be down. So it's going to be for the, at least the next five years. And I think my group is really focused right now on designing and understanding understanding how we can make our customer discover the technology without having to really focus on the technology. So I think uh, as much as we could, uh, this is what we're going to do. And um, I think it's for the benefit of the customer, obviously, to kind of, you know, be transparent in terms of the technology and really focused on services. So you're spot on on your question. Now, Orange doesn't just have cellular networks, it also has fixed broadband networks. Um, how does that shape your thinking and your work? Do, do you have to regard them both together in a converged state and op of operation or, or do, you, do, you, do you look at a certain set for mobile, certain set for fixed? Sure, it's an excellent question. So first of all, Orange is present in 28 countries, so it really depends on the geographies. We are very much present in Africa and in Europe. In Africa, obviously, you know, the fiber is not there uh, or it's very limited presence of fiber. So if you put Africa on the side, then in the focus on Europe, yes, definitely. Uh, convergence has been, and for a long time now, um, a strategy from, you know, maybe more than 10 years ago in Europe. And uh, as we've said sometimes, it's a bit of the jewels of the crown for us. So we're very happy because we've got customers that are more loyal when they are converged customers, meaning having a mobile and a home connectivity. And it's also some Thing that uh, we've been rolling out from France to other countries where we operate. Um, so to your point, when my group looks at products and services, uh, we try not to look at it from a silo technology perspective because at the end of the day, we have a home, a person, it can be on itself or it can be with a family, but he has needs of connectivity and those needs of connectivity are at home or at outside of home. So if I may maybe go a bit further, if you look at 5G, um, tomorrow gaming is one of the use cases that we are deeply thinking it's going to you know, um, be a good case in terms of monetization and new services. But you don't want to look at gaming for gaming only in mobility. You would like to think about you know, that you have a gaming service that works on fiber on the cloud, and then you can take that service outside of home with the 5G. And the really good thing is that it's exactly what our customer expect. They don't expect you as a you know, service operator not to think that way. And I think that's why um, I love my job as well, because you, know, you have to have you know, a bit of a cleverness, but also you know, uh, thinking that your customer uh, really expect that you are clever enough to uh, make sure that you feel their needs. So a seamless experience for customers, no matter where they are, whatever the best time is, whatever device they're, the they're near game. as well. <laughs> That's the end game. It seems very simple, but it's absolutely not simple. So if you take, you know, this example of, you know, gaming and 5G, you really need to think about, you know, you need the 5G network to be absolutely, you know, uh, good enough to allow for that, you know, low latency to happen for the gamers to have the same experience. And you also need to have the device that goes with it. And then you need to have the game that is available on your set-top box, on your TV, on your smart TV, and also on your device. So it means a lot around the ecosystem, and we are kind of, you know, in the middle of it, trying and, and successfully trying to put things together for our customer. This suggests to me that the industry has, has matured a lot from its, its earlier days of providing basic connectivity. It was, it was bandwidth or it was minutes, whatever it was. Now there seems to be a, a recognition that you've got to develop deeper relationships with your customers, create these, these so-called experiential services. Is, is, is that part of your thinking? 
Yes, of course. I mean, obviously, uh, as any consumer, you know, industry, uh, research um, is very valid. And the research says that uh, the more you engage with your customer as a brand and, you know, the more deeply you understand them, I mean, the more loyal your customer are going to be. And the more you learn about their habits, the more you can serve them also differently. And this is where also the data and AI also, you know, are in into the place. So uh, for us, it's very much, you know, um, when you've got that, then you can extend into other territories. And that's exactly what, you know, we've been building also along the years. If you take Africa, for example, as uh, our geography, we've really invested into what we call the service called Orange Money. So you can transfer money from, you know, one phone to the other. It doesn't have to be a smartphone. It could be a feature phone. So it works also in, on USSD, but it also works on smartphone. And it's really engaging our customer into, you know, Orange can provide something else through technology and connectivity that just minutes and data. That said, minutes and data is a good business, and it's still, you know, our, our core business um, as Orange. So it, it also comes back to communication service providers becoming more providers of digital services, digital services providers, and we're seeing Orange um, not just doing Orange money, but Orange banking. There's there's, mm -hmm. there's a number of areas, the smart home. Um, all, all of this is a is a I guess a, a, a deeper layer of, of services and more involved services. Building off connectivity, I guess, but going going further than, than connectivity, further than any telco's gone in the past. Well, it's hard to uh, obviously uh, tell if it's uh, further than any telco, but uh, for sure, I mean, it's one of our key strategic pillar to really develop, you know, new growth territories and uh, building up the stack in terms of, you know, adding up from connectivity to service layer is what we do for B2C, but also for B2B. If you look at a gross territory, which is Orange Business Services, we're really much into, and 5G is an excellent, uh, you know, uh, use case for that. We, we really want to help, uh, you know, our B2B to be customer, be more efficient, be more productive, providing them with SLA in terms of, you know, what connectivity can bring to for them to be more productive. And so we've got this example, you know, the port of Antwerp, whereby, you know, we've developed, you know, and, and we're really testing, uh, you know, 5G, you know, at scale within this mini environment, uh, because we really think that, you know, uh, that beyond connectivity will really help um, companies to, you know, drive uh, more efficiency in their own business. See, the, the options and the, the opportunities for new services and, and products seems almost Almost endless, um, it, it, but yet it requires it requires uh, um, it requires innovation. It, it requires thinking. You, you've got to actually map these into your business model and, and, and produce them. When you when you start innovating into new areas, how much of what you do is internal? Or how much relies on a on a ex or external ecosystem that you need to support? Of course. So, well, I think there are so many uh, answers to that question. It obviously depends on um, which product and which service we look at. Um, again, if I take 5G, uh, we've launched a 5G challenge uh, that will come to an end at the VivaTech. VivaTech is the big event in June in Paris uh, around technology and startups. So we, we want to get, you know, uh, the ecosystem moving into the right direction. And so if I take, again, 5G as an example, this is um, an excellent case case in point because we need the ecosystem to really field um, also you know to feed the industry with new services and we need to you know it's, it's like we need to to start with something and then uh, we think that the you know there will be more and more coming um, but that's really how we work um, it's also uh, fair to say that 10 years ago API did not exist so we're trying also with our API and orange developer you know website etc we're trying to hook up as many developers through our system so that, you know, uh, services can be developed also on top of the connectivity. So that's some, something also that is quite, I think, not new, new, but fairly new. Um, so yes, definitely we're not alone and we need to be surrounded and supported by an ecosystem and partnership is something that uh, we're really keen on. And is it important to f focus all your activities around the Orange brand or are you, are you happy... I'm happy to work with other partners and sort of subjugate your brand somewhat. 
Oh, orange. So there is a tremendous value in orange brand. Uh, so I'm not going to comment any further. But for sure, we you know we can always you know share uh, some you know sponsoring and, and co-branding you know if need be. But uh, obviously, orange is a, is our brand, and we're very proud to use our brand uh, as much as we can. <laughs> Final question for you then: Where where's where's the biggest challenges for an operator such as Orange? Where in terms of the need to, 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 to put out new services and to monetize new services and enter new markets or like, like the money market, the bank market. Where, where's the biggest challenge for you in your job? I think where's your challenge? So, yeah, of course. So in my, in my job, it's really f f the focus. So first of all, is not to spread too much thin because when you, know, when you work on, uh, in my job, you, 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 know, you have to have a relentless focus on making sure that what you do absolutely is getting delivered to the opco to hit the market. So I think focus is obviously uh, one key area. And right now I'm focused on 5G, which I think it's a good area to be focused on. Great. Well, Karine, thank you very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you.